before I was part of this program, I felt like I, I felt like I was inferior to everybody else, um, and that's obviously not true. I was going to ask, do you talk about stuttering at home, or do you use the word stuttering with him? Not really, no. Mm -mm. We, actually, we don't use the word stuttering at all. Um, and when I talk about uh, the fluent, I say disfluencies, and I don't even think he knows what that is. What he knows is bumpy speech. Okay. That's all that we say. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, our speech is getting bumpy again. You know, can we maybe, let's like maybe take a break. And this was all... At the rec I mean, I, I didn't know anything about this, but this has all come from his speech therapist. I mean, I heard, well, you don't say it, you don't identify it, you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't make it a big deal. Well, that's essentially what leads to 
children believing that it's a big deal because it's if you don't talk about it, then they think, oh, okay, what is what is wrong? Why why aren't they discussing it? Because we pretty much discuss everything, right? We discuss what you do when you get up in the morning. Everything, especially for as young as my son is, is very organized, very, and, and he knows every detail and why and how and who and, you know. So if you make this the one thing that, that you don't discuss, then they really will think that there's something wrong with them. My father stammered uh, and, you know, and a good few of my um, other family members, including uncles, and, um, but we never talked about it. So this is really, I'm so encouraged when I see such a big group of um, young people here just talking openly about stammering. It's, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's absolutely right. It's awesome.
my mother became very tense every time I stuttered. I don't think she knew she was doing this, but what came across to me was that she wanted me to be perfect and I was not perfect. I wish that someone like me had been, be, been able to talk to her about stuttering and to tell her that fluency is not as important as she thought and that stuttering is not as bad as she feared. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Grant. As a person who stutters, um, I've experienced years of speech therapists, friends, and family helping to eliminate my stutter. You've probably heard many of the same things. Many of you here have. String your words together to avoid blocking, speak in a monotone voice devoid of passion and emotion to prevent yourself from repeating. But what the Blank Center has helped me realize is that these techniques, they took away part of who I am. It took away my stutter that is a part of me and they took away my personality. Okay, um, something I like about the Blank Foundation is that I like really that they're teaching us that like they're not trying to help us stop our stuttering. They're trying like I feel much better about my stuttering now like than I feel like 
it's okay for me to go in front of an audience and speak now. But before I had gone to the foundation, I was just a complete wreck when I went up in front of a group of people. Back then, I wish I could have known that it was okay to stumble in my words. I wish I could have understood that it was normal to be different. I wish I could have seen how beautiful I was at making my faces. And I wish that I could have heard the uniqueness of my speech. I have learned, and now I know, that everything is okay. I sound normal, I am beautiful, and I am strong. Thank you. It's, I'm not like, I'm not overtly more fluent. I still stutter really often. Uh, in fact, compared to last semester, I think I'm stuttering more. But it, that's just the nature of it. It comes in waves, it's always gonna stay. It's always gonna be here. Might as well get used to it. I first gave my disclosure statement just saying, oh, before we begin, I, I want to tell you that I'm a person who stutters, so you may hear blocks and repetitions in my speech. So with this person, Marilyn, I didn't voluntarily stutter, but I did disclose. And so after I asked the questions and I said stuff, then she said, and you didn't stutter at all. And that's when I said, oh, no worries, I love stuttering and stuttering is totally cool. It's just a neurophysical genetic thing.
I'm Albert. Uh, I'm a student here at UT. Um, and I'm also a person who stutters, which means that it may take me longer to say what I need to say, but nonetheless, I will say it. Well, 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 that was a positive statement be, because she was looking straight at the screen and and she was incorporating some good eye contact and she had a smile and, and she had a smile the, the whole time she was speaking. She, she also didn't apologize uh, about the, the fact that she stuttered, so that's excellent. Um, hi, I'm Sophia. I'm um, eight years old. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I'm a person who stutters, and I like that I stutter since it makes me um, unique. And you might, you may hear, hear me uh, repeat a, a, a sound or, or stumble on a word. Um, and what I wish people knew about stuttering was that um, that stuttering can't stop anybody from doing what they want to do. If you stutter or not, you can still do what you want to do. Hi, my name is Juro, and I'm a person who stutters. And I'm, I'm going to be, and I'm going to tell you why it is important to self-disclose, and and what self-disclosing is. Self-disclosing is what I just did now. Is it is when you is when you say your name and and, and you tell someone that you stuttered beforehand. And and self-disclosing is important because if you didn't if you don't tell them, they and and you stutter in a sentence, they might be confused on, on what happened or or why you just said a word twice or or when you said a word it sounded weird when you said it i think it's good to self d disclose because it tells the person that you um you that you that you are confident in yourself um and i think that feels good
Okay, Seneca, can you show me how you self-disclose? How I self-disclose is, is like, like um, I say, hi, my name is Seneca, and I'm a person who stutters. And what stuttering is, is, is that you sometimes have a stretch or a bump in your sentence. Okay. So when you tell other people about your stuttering, how does that make you feel? That makes me feel really good. I you get it to teach other people about stuttering that they can teach each like I teach some people about stuttering, then they can teach other people about stuttering, and then those people can teach other people about stuttering, oh. and it can keep on going. That's awesome. Like once I talked to my friends about it and kind of let it go, it didn't really bother me anymore. But when I was just holding it in <laughs> and even like trying to put push it back, it still bothered me and made me really upset. And then I just <laughs> decided to say, yes, it's there, it happened, but that's okay it made it feel a lot better. So, um, how long will you, um, like, 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 when did you start stuttering? And, uh, I have two questions. One was, when did you start stuttering? And the other one was, when did you start accepting your stuttering? Sophia, that is <laughs> such a deep question. Uh, I started stuttering at a really young age, probably age five or six or probably five i think five four or five is when my when my parents first started noticing and sophia if i'm going to answer that question honestly and you all know now look i have no shame in being vulnerable it matters right it's it's part of uh it's part of being in touch with your most inner self is to feel safe with who you are and i feel that this is a safe space it's probably why i cried 30 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, because this feels like a safe place for me. Uh, and, and to be honest, I probably didn't accept my stuttering until last year when I was here. That was probably the very first time in my life that I, that I felt, okay, this is, this is who I am. This is, this is a part of me. And so, Sophia, you are probably a lot further along in this, in this path, as are so many of you all here, than I was. It took me a long time. A long time, you know, many people who stutter, many adults who stutter, stutter by themselves. They don't stutter in a community of folks like you all. And so it took me, Sophia, a long time. And so I'm, I'm taking lessons from you uh, and, and learning what it means to have some acceptance, Sophia.
but I wasn't angry, mad, or upset when I stuttered because I realized it's just a part of my speech. But you're probably wondering, what in the world does this have to do with being a great communicator? Personally, I think I was a great communicator because even though I was afraid I would stutter, I still did it. I delivered my message. Now let's take what I did in the story and compare it to what you can do on a daily basis to be a better communicator. First of all, whenever you're given the opportunity to practice communicating, always take it. I challenge you to show some of your own courage and determination and take the next public speaking opportunity you get, no matter how scared you are. You will never get better at communicating if you don't practice it. And the only way to get better is to slow yourself off into the deep end. Thank you for listening. I hope you've learned something helpful here today. Uh, it, and, it, and it all started when I showed up at the Lang Institute, and, uh, and I'm still learning. I'm still, uh, I'm, uh, I started way later than you guys, and I'm way behind y'all, and I wish I could have had this resource uh, when I was at the age of, of pretty much any of you in here. So, uh, so please, 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 please don't take it for granted. Thanks.
my my hope is that um is that my 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 story might benefit some of you in the audience. Dear Alex, have you ever heard of the boy who stuttered? At six years old, this this boy I barely knew what stuttering was. Only that at his school, one of his classmates also had the same apparent thing wrong with him. He would later find out that there was nothing wrong with him. The only thing wrong were people's opinions and views on stuttering. People, even teachers, and a few speech pathologists whose jobs are to understand stuttering, thought that stuttering was something you should hide and try to fix. This, this boy tried and tried to use strategies to learn, like sliding and roller coaster speech. The boy was confused because he had no clue humans were supposed to sound like roller coasters. His view of stuttering changed in the summer of seventh grade. While on vacation in Austin, he met people from Camp Dream Speak Lived. From then on, he viewed stuttering not as something to be fixed, but something that he needed to learn and embrace. The boy then realized that people do not care if you stutter. They only care if you are interesting and if you are an effective communicator. His parents saw that the Institute helped him to, to be more confident aware of his stutter and, and more comfortable with stuttering at home and at school. Um, and they they had then arranged a a a, a conference um, to help and get the a message out in Maryland for every speech pathologist in the state. I just to share Dr. Bird's message, it worked. Many many pathologists had then changed their ways and focus on acceptance instead of changing people who stutters stutter, making them feel the need to be fluent. To this day, that boy dreams what he wants to dream, says what he wants to say, and most importantly, will live his life not being afraid of stuttering. Young Alex and all of you in the audience today, I hope that that my story inspires you to live your life and embrace stuttering. Thank all of you. I, I thank all of you for listening to my story.